welcome to a dual episode, Dub Talks. We've got Suds with Luds, and let me tell you something, with Nate Newton, we are missing Isaiah Samak, so I am filling in. I am Emily Jones. I am thrilled to be with these two guys, partly because we've worked together mm -hmm. over the years. It's almost two decades that we've known wow. each other. Wow. Which means we're old AF. Right. 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 And I feel like we also have plenty of dirt on each other. We can you say AS <laughs> or AF. AF. It's oh, that'd be as fuck. Right? As fuck. Okay. Yes. All right. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was listen. Nate. Nate is not comfortable <laughs> no, with the. <laughs> no, I am comfortable. But if I start laughing and lose it, don't get mad at me. Right. Okay. How could anyone yeah. get mad at you? Okay. This right. is what I've learned. I could get mad at you. Easy. Okay. This one is hard to get mad at. Yes, look at you. him. Look, thank look. You. I mean, thank you know, he's you. always got a smile on always his face. Always got a yeah. smile on his face. Yeah. You're constantly giving me shit. Constantly. <laughs> <laughs> this. Oh, Lord. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. I wish you wouldn't have said that. Now I have that visual again. I right, did just right. earlier. Wow. Wow. <laughs> earlier, you told us you had to go pee. I did. And I just got that one out of my I did. mind. I did. Oh. Okay. To the ladies' room. <laughs> to the ladies' room. To the ladies, to the potter room. Okay, who would have ever thought that in all this, that this is our prim and proper one? This is our prim and proper one over here. It's Nate. From it's the... From the it's for like old Nate was very, very, very rude. And <laughs> no, you weren't rude. It's just not the. It's not the image people think of when okay. they think of Nate Newton. Yeah. You are. You might be the primest, properest dude I know. Yeah. Today. Today. Uh, today. Today. The I last twelve years. I, cause Before I, that, I was loved. Because <laughs> I say stuff mm. and you like blush and get all embarrassed and start laughing right. and then I kind of feel like. Yeah. Man, I shouldn't have wow. said that around Nate. But then I'm like, man, I've known him for a long time. I can say whatever I want around That's Nate. Right. That's right? right. That's right. right. That's right. No. And Luds, I've always felt like I could, I could say anything I wanted to around him because. Is it the horns that give it away? Yeah, or? That. Wow. Uh, I, it just, it, it's I just know. you. It's We're, just you. Ms. M, let yeah. me ask you this right here. Please. You want to call me Ms. M. Whatever. Uh, been called worse. What Nate. is Been your show? Worse. You have a show with the Dub Network. I do. I Can do. we tell the folks what? It's called the Mom Game. It's a with mom. Notice <laughs> it's called the Mom Game. <laughs> Remember the Mom Game. Are you, are, are you worried about my children? No, no, I'm not. I'm not worried about Julie's children, but not yours. Because all you say, get your in their car before I slap them. You know what I'm saying? Is that right? Whereas Julie Valentine said a thousand times, you just you just go off. Yes. I understand. I'm not worried about your children. Your, 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 your. Uh, you know Maybe. me. You know me too well, Nate. Okay, you know right. me too well. Okay. First of all, I want to ask you guys. Like, we're kind of in, still in the early stages of the Dub Network, mm -hmm. of each of your shows. Bloody, what's it? What's it been like? I mean, you're. We're trying to. We're, we're trying to groom you into being this like polished podcast Good host. Luck. How do you? Yeah. Thank you, sir. I'm kidding. How do you feel? How do you feel? I, things are going. I, I I enjoy it, but I I've had the. Uh, I guess for me, I, I've picked some guys that I'm very good friends with, and so obviously that makes it a lot easier. Um, I didn't even know some of the things that that we've come up with, um, and the guys that I, so far, I've had. They're very outgoing, you know, and so and I, you know what? And I, truthful, I, I don't, I don't know how the NFL guys are, right. but our guys are the same guys that we played with, you know, and, and we are a little bit rude and crude, I guess. But what? Um, they're well, they're entertainingly yes, rude and crude. I'm with you. Um, so right, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm surprised that the way some of them have come off, and um, as easy it has been to get the guys to come on. It's like, yeah, sure, no problem. So I'm sure it's going to get harder. Um, so, but I, what I found, Nate, is I'm I'm going back in the past too much. Right, you know what I mean? Right, I'm, I'm yeah. doing the old school guys too much, and I don't even know there's not many people alive probably tuning in because right. that's how old we are. So, so you that's want, not you want me phone. to get that? Is that you? No, no, I'm taking this my phone. I'm trying to get out. Uh -oh. Oh, is that my phone? Not me. <laughs> that's you, you Jack. I want your rude and crude friends. Oh, that's my heart monitor. That's I think you. I need my medication. I need my <laughs> medication. Hey, bartender. <laughs> yeah, okay. It don't matter. Miller Lite. Anybody got any more Miller Lite here? Heart, yeah. heart, heart, heart A couple of you guests who have been. Well, who have you had? A couple of you guys. I don't know if you know there. Uh, Chris Chelios. You okay. You'd probably heard of Chelly. Yes, Chelly's yeah. in the Hall of Fame. Um, wow. Played 26 years in the NHL. Wow. Uh, he was my partner in Montreal. Um, cool story about Chelly a long time ago, and I'll very short. We were both Bears fans at the time. For some right. crazy reason, 
and it's when Walter Payton bought his offensive line Rolexes when yes, they all sir. right. I remember that. Well, Chelly made that comment to me one day. If we, uh, you know, we win the Stanley Cup, and to get you a Rolex, and I said, Yeah, right, Chelly. And he goes, No, 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 don't worry about it. I'm gonna get it. So, long story short, he all, at the end of the year we won the Stanley Cup. Chelly had a hundred thousand dollar bonus or something like that. He put a little pamphlet in my locker. I took it home. It was right at the end of the year, and I opened it up probably about two, three weeks after I got back to Wisconsin, and he had X's through all the most expensive ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and so anyway, come back, um, and he had one sitting in my locker uh, when we got to camp, and we'll get into some training camps so uh, now. We got, uh, I had a watch in there, and on the back of it, he had engraved, uh, Leds, thanks for staying back. Chelly. Uh, you know, so talk about cool guys, Hall of Famers. Um, but anyways, I've, I've had all the good guys, Mike Heike, a reporter. Uh, my favorite is probably going to come up with when we get Razor. I, I'm wow. looking forward to getting Daryl Ray, um, you know, broadcaster, ex-player. He didn't play much, but he, I don't think he played at all. He tells everybody. He did, but <laughs> I'm ask, looking forward to it. So ask him how he felt about my hockey knowledge on the broadcast. Uh, I could probably, I can probably guess. <laughs> I don't have to I, guess. I, I'm very oh, well. Aware. I thought you were going to say you don't have any. <laughs> That, that too. That, that okay. also is true. Uh, Nate, for you, what's this? What's this been like? You've had some experience in television. This isn't new for you, this broadcasting thing. But the podcast is kind of a. It, it it's is a little bit of a different story. Yes, it's a it little. Is. It's a little looser. Yeah, it is it, looser. But my thing when Miss Julie came to me and told me about it, I'm like, wow, okay. I didn't. I knew I didn't want. I know I didn't want to do it by myself. I'm like, nah, I'm best when I got a, someone, a young lady or a young man throwing stuff at me. You know, not up on the wall, but just, you know, nicely. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I th went to thinking. When she was talking, I was thinking. She like, and I was staring off, who can I get to come in with me? I know she's saying, Nate, this is by yourself. And I'm like, who? And so I'm thinking. And then I thought of two guys, Jesse Holly. And I thought of uh, Isaiah Stanback. And then me. And no, then, okay. no, not no. you. Okay. You okay. raised okay. yourself. Okay. Uh, and so I said, I Isaiah, he's up and coming. He's bright. He knows the game. He knows all the sports. And he knows a lot of people. Because they said they want to guess. So I'm like, I know a lot of people. He know a lot of people. Between me and him. And he has a workout facility. Thank you, Tom. So, I'll take and two. He, had, he knows young talent young up and coming guys that are going to college guys that he worked out that's going to the uh popular guy don't worry about it don't worry about it, well, it, it about it, and so he he knows and so he was my perfect fit yeah oh, shit, the and so me and isaiah hooked up and uh, we've done a couple of shows he's even had patrick creighton on and so we often running dub network uh, I'm waiting for tom and miss julia to get me some more stuff so i can get it out on the social and get it bigger yeah you know? And for you, like like you said, you 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 probably of everyone, right. you take it the most seriously. <laughs> why, why you say that? Because say I that? mean, because I feel like we're we're <laughs> like we're just like yeah, you but know. You, but if shoot you've the seen shit. no, but if you've you, seen me and Isaiah, we 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 rock. Oh no, yeah. for sure. Yeah. But you, I, I feel like you approach everything with I have to. I'm intention. Not, I'm, I'm not the smartest. Like Love is much smarter than me. You as much. Well, we could have a we could have so a contest to, there. Zero chance. <laughs> so I have to kind of <laughs> focus a little bit better, you know, and, and uh, because we gotta be successful. I don't never attack anything unless I see success in my mind. So I, I looked at the guys that y'all have assembled, you know, the baseball, the, the hockey, the, the basketball. Y'all got the best of the best, and all of us got TV, radio, some type of experience. So now we gotta, and so. Uh, I may get I may get real wild after we get some success. God, can I come on when you get real wild? <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. That's yeah. that's what I want to yeah. be on is when you get real yeah. wild. Wow. Okay, Luddy was talking about the gift that Chelios gave him the Rolex. What's the best gift? Because if that's a that's Emmett a thing. Smith and the Rolex. Okay. Emmy Smith did the same thing, the Walter Payton stuff like that, and when he rushed for uh, all those yards, um, as he had well, he was a Russian leader that year, and uh, next thing you know, we had Rolexes. Remember, yeah. What? Troy has given us golf bags, tr computers, uh, just, just it's, Troy has gave us so much stuff to, it's just hard to remember. And uh, appearances, you know, hey, Nate, come do this appearance with me, come do this, you know, hey, I got this for you. Mike, same way, you know, so we, over the years, you know, jewelry, watches, they've taken care of us. And yes. I feel like though that the teams of that genre, the cowboy teams, right. kind of had a wheels off, like, Persona. Oh yeah. I mean, oh, wheels yeah. off. But y'all stuck together like 
nobody's business. And Ain't I, no books, baby. Ain't no books, none. That's what it was an unwritten thing. We ain't having no books. Right? I've seen a lot of naked bodies in my day. <laughs> and I know where they all bear it, baby. Believe oh, that. I, oh, I thought you were talking strip <laughs> no. you said I was going to say oh, us, too. I've bro, seen bro, lots let me of tell them. You, let me tell you something. Because this is clean. This is America. It is. We never looked at strip joints as strip joints. They were ladies that just wore a little bit less than everybody else. And they went to the powder room. <laughs> yeah, a lot. <laughs> so wait a second. At one time? No. no. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, not her. <laughs> no, please. I don't think we saw her. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Trust me, you did it. Trust me. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. I'll tell you a quick story. That's a perfect... Let me, you said, we let me went, tell you something. Yeah. <laughs> we, we went to Atlanta to play the Buffalo Bills, I think, in the, in the second Super Bowl. I think it's the second Super Bowl. The fans are telling me if I'm wrong. And we would go to the, to the club. So the, you know, we, like I said, we didn't call them streets. We said, we going to the club because we didn't want to go to a normal club. The club to us was the strip joints. So that when we say, hey, let's go to the club, we all gathered up. Mike Ryan, I tell you, he's sitting over there, right, looking at us. We would go to these clubs, and we'd be drinking, and we were partying, and we were going on, and the Buffalo Bills walked in. And we all got to thinking, you know what? We practice hard, because we practice with our pads on even during the week of the Super Bowl. So we not, we always stayed in shape and ready to hit. And so we said, let's just, so each one of us just picked out a player, and we just started buying beer after beer. <laughs> I had Bruce Bill. Hey, Bruce. How you doing? What you drinking? Da -da. Tabs on me. I got Mr. Smith. Were you going was, one for one with him, or you, you're just buying I'm, him I'm drinks? just sipping, and I'm just... Because, see, I had to go visit the ladies' room later on. Uh. I wanted him where he couldn't visit the ladies' room that day or Sunday. You know what I'm saying? That's probably why my first wife is gone, because I visited the ladies' room a little too much. Yeah. And it worked. It worked. It worked. Yeah, I it lost my wife, and I uh, beat them in the Super Bowl. <laughs> You yeah. won two Super Bowls. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You win some. You, yeah, you lose, lose some. some. I lost a really important one. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. It's good. It's uh, all good. But you, <laughs> <laughs> look at see, look, this. Is, oh, this is my favorite name. Yeah, yeah. This is my favorite yeah. name. Um, when you look now at the way the game has changed, because now I feel like, I mean, it might be going on to a certain extent. Yes. But shit ain't going on like that anymore. No at no. all regular season it's much less the super bowl for goodness right, sake right how much have you seen the game change both in the nhl and in the nfl Luddy, we will start with you uh the, the the kids coming up now to me are, are more conditioned it the only sad part for me it's not sad it, it, the difference for me is that a game in our respective sports is that it's a 10 to 11 month job right you, you play the season, you train during the off season, you get ready to go. The kids are doing that now. And the only thing that I don't like about it is that, you know, they, there's camps and spring camps, tryout camps, all these things in the summer that they're, they need to go to or are supposed to go to for the particular teams that they're trying out for. They don't really get to know if they can play another sport because we turn them into one sport athletes. And I think when you look at some of the best players that played in hockey, hand-eye coordination is, is huge, yes. right? And, and yes. so, you know what I mean? Like, the you, you look at all the European players, hockey players, they all play soccer, you know, so their feet and eyes and, um, you know, we grew up playing baseball. I myself, baseball, right. football, and then hockey, and then track and stuff like that. And so you become more of a all-around athlete than kind of pigeonholing it. And the other thing is, it's like, you don't give them an opportunity to find out if they can play another sport. Like, they may not, in, in the NHL, there are 740-some guys that play. So reality is, of the hundreds of thousands of people that want to play at the NHL, NHL level, you're probably not going to play. That, those are just the odds. But when you get a skating coach and a uh, you know, skills coach and all this stuff at 12, 13, 14 years old, and you do it 10 months a year, you don't know if you're going to be a good baseball player, football, basketball, things like that, because you, you didn't get the opportunity. And you may be cutting down from a different path that you could have gone. But again, they're, they're, they're skilled now. They take care of themselves so well now. And just one quick story, and it was back in Anaheim. We were traveling, and I was doing the thing with Razor, the broadcast stuff, and we got into Anaheim, and there were like four or five guys standing around the concierge in a hotel in Anaheim. 
and you know we get our bags we run upstairs and these guys are standing there I go back up put your jeans on come back down they're still standing there and I went up to him and said hey you guys want to know where to go like what are you looking for what bar you want to go to I can tell you this there's this kind of place or that kind of place right. and they all kind of looked at me like I had three heads and they're like no we're just trying to find the closest Whole Foods and from that moment, and that was five, six years ago, I'm like, they really have changed. And they were taking care of their bodies. You know, they wanted to get the good food in them. They didn't want to go to a strip joint. They didn't want to go to a bar. They didn't want to eat bar food. They wanted to go get their, their power drinks or whatever they call that stuff, or whey or wheat, whatever they call it, and mix it with all this shit. And, and they take care of themselves. <laughs> yeah. But now they come in, and they come, hit, they come in, and they hit the ground running. Like, everybody, do you ever get to ask, do you think you could play in today's game? And I'm like, not a chance. Not the way these guys take care of themselves. My question is, are they as physical as y'all? No, that's changed. I mean, and again, I think a lot of that isn't because of the players so much. They're skilled. They're, they have more talent, more skill than, than I've ever seen in a group. But, but a lot of it, I think, from the NHL came from the fighting, you know, the hitting from behind, all these right. kind of things. And that kind of falls on the big league and stuff like right. that when they got to deal with concussions and things like that down right, the road. Right. So they're trying to take care of that stuff. And so the rules changed a lot, but the players were changing at the same time. Now, in my opinion, it's a better, fa I don't, I'm not going to say better game. It's a faster game. It's more exciting. There's more skill going on out there, but we do miss, or I do, I think a lot of us old guys, we miss the physical contact. We miss the fights every once in a while. I mean, you, you can, I mean, you can go four or five games and there isn't a fight. Right. You couldn't go four or five shifts before and, and without having one. Right. So that's changed a lot. But but again, I, I think they're all well conditioned. It's not like they don't fight, they don't hit. But some of the rules, um, they really it, it's hard for them to hit now because they don't want to spend time in the box. And I, I covered Trey, your son, right. when mm -hmm. he was in high school. Right. Um, how did you manage that as a parent, seeing the game change kind of before your eyes? Yeah, yeah, and it, it, it made me more aware because my son eventually went to Texas and stopped because he had one too many concussions. And it started when he was in Pee Wee Ball. I remember I didn't even understand. And I think Jay saw it and said, hey, man, you got to go check on Because he was crying. I'm like, man, get over there. He was crying. He said, man, something a little bit deeper happening. You know, so I didn't even realize that my kid had a concussion. I'm just trying to be the tough guy, the tough dad, because I'm a coach too. And then it dawned on me, like, wow, man, my kid, you know, had a concussion. And then from that point on, periodically we have a concussion. So I was aware of the physical part and how it needed to change. But then just the, the toughness of how we was brought up and the way we did it, you know, I, I wanted it to still be a tough game. And so moving on to the, to the uh, pro game, I am so, you know, I, I've never been jealous of another man in my life because I'm just not built that way. But every time I see Tyron Smith and the way he's built, I'm like, God, if you'd have gave me that body, I'd have still been playing. Mm -hmm. I, I, do you see this dude? I, I see him. This dude is 30 years old, 30 in his mid-30s. Lord, if you see him, you'd be like, like he's wow. He's built like a brick shit house. Yes, like, and, and it makes is, me mad. It, and I tell him, I say, bro. Yeah. If somebody hit you late at night with a hammer in the back of your head, it's me <laughs> trying to steal your body. You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. And so I'm with you. These kids, you couldn't have gave me. I was in training camp. They went two days. They went four days of acclimation. No pads. Walkthroughs, jogthroughs, fast walkthroughs. Then they put on the pads two days. And then the next day, they was off. I'm like, I couldn't have stayed in shape. I could, you you know how I used to be built. You got, everybody used to be like, yo, that's Big Nate. And it wasn't hard to figure Big Nate out in the crowd. Yeah. You know. And I'm looking at these guys and they stay in shape. Now they don't be in football shape like these guys. A lot of these guys don't be in hockey shape. That comes during the season, the first four or five games. But these guys are so much better athletes, so much quicker, so faster. You know, if they did play the way we play, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a soul left on the field at the sure. end of the game. They'll tear themselves apart because yeah. they're so gifted, uh, skill set. Like you said, they, little kids working on their feet. You know, we used to do that with basketball. We used to do that with track. You know, I was a shot put. I was a discus guy. I used to work my feet like that. I used to work my feet uh, hand eye coordination with baseball, playing baseball. Now they got guys and you know lights. And, you know, <laughs> see the light? Go get the light. You know what I'm saying? Okay, one more question back to the, the difference in times, not necessarily related to what's on the field, but can you imagine if social media oh. and cell phone cameras 
would have been, <laughs> look at both of you. <laughs> Y'all are all like, oh dear, oh no. Listen, I feel the same way in college. Feel the I same way. I had to give her 50%. So you know. If it would have been a phone, I had to give her 100. <laughs> I wouldn't own nothing. I would have been left with nothing. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, that's not, it's not just the, the strength and agility and the training and the, all that. I mean, it's the fact that this world has changed. And how grateful are you, because I know I am, that that shit didn't exist when I was in college and when y'all were in your heyday. I mean, it's, it, that, that has to be part of it, right? Because that's you know you're being me. watched all the time. There were men, we, we would have we got the first Super Bowl, second and third, <laughs> suspensions, Suspensions, yeah. suspensions. We, we would have been depleted, not from injury, but just suspensions. What they what they did to Zeke about four or five years ago, when they suspended this kid, when he was cleared of all charges, cleared of all charges, and he got suspended. Now, we would have been at the White House, and one of them young ladies would have decided she didn't like the, 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 what, what, what happened. Come on on the mic, Mike, and you tell me. <laughs> we wouldn't have had, it was good for radio it was good for tv sure. but it wouldn't have been good for our for our football team yeah game over uh, because game at that over. time yes. we, got our, we got our friend mike Reiner. come on mike tell us. come on around here man because no. th they, these are one of the few yeah. outfits talking about it yeah. right i mean this old dude was he was you you knew what was going on i'm a young dude Young dude, this this young dude. But it gave oh, you it gave you material every day, oh, didn't yeah. you? Oh boy, did it ever! <laughs> yeah. yeah, did it ever? And it got us away from the game too. Yeah. Which, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the games, but I also love getting away from it every now. Yeah. And then. yeah. All right, here's what I want to hear. I want to hear a Jimmy story from you. Oh, Jimmy story. Good one. Did you ever you know, send you the asthma field uh, you know, or? The, the asthma field. Did he send you to the asthma field? Ever? No, no. The asthma field. I'm gonna tell you how that was brought about. We had 10, 16 one tens. Is that correct? It was sixteen one tens, and he would have the media out there. When we first started doing this, he got a little more tactful as time went on. He would have the media out there standing up on the track. This was at the old place, and I knew I wasn't gonna make it. Love. I looked him right now. I said, Coach John, I said, you know what? He's not going to cut me in front of all these guys, not the media. He's not going to just cut me. So before we went out, I said, I said, Coach Johnson, I said, uh, I looked him right in his eye. I said, I'm not going to make these 16 one ten. So if you need to get rid of me, let's do this now. <laughs> because I'm already saying in my mind, if this little dude tried to embarrass me in front of all these media people, I'll never play football again. Oh, yeah, is. I'll never oh. play. Come on in here, Hawk. Come it's on in here. It's a party. We got a party going. We're, we're just learning about the time where, where, Nate, where, where Nate told Jimmy Johnson to go ahead and cut him before, before he did it in front of the media. You got to come on around. You got to come around. All right, come on, Hart. Over here. Over here. Hi, honey. Good to see you. What's up, My friend? Right, How are you doing, Hart? Come on. Nate's time. Now, you can't kiss Lug. Now, I saw you bitter. <laughs> Is she be backing he away, told too? Jimmy Johnson to cut him before he got cut in front of okay, the media. So okay, so we was doing these 16-1-10. No, no, you're no in, problem. You're in. And so I done told Coach, said, you might well going to cut me now. He, like, he said, no, 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 because he watched film. He knew I could ball. He said, no, Nate. He said, no, this is how we're going to handle this. He said, I don't know how many you're going to make. Do you have an idea how many you're going to make? I said, no, Coach. I don't know how many I'm going to make. <laughs> he said, all I ask for you to do no matter what happened, keep going. He said, I don't care if you just just act like, pump your arms, act like you're giving it all you got, and just don't stop. When you get to the end, just turn around. Cause, and so I made the first one, boom. I made the second one. He looked at me, he smiled. I made the third one. I didn't make the fourth one, but the, but the, the, trainer, the, the trainer said, he made it. You know, I, I didn't make so. At that point, I looked over at Coach Johnson. I went to doing this. He's like, okay. So that point on, I just kept going. About the eighth one or the tenth one, a dude fell out down there by the media. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. And so all the, all the trainers around, Jimmy, he have asthma. Jimmy said, I don't give a shit. Take his ass over to that field. That's the asthma field. I believe the word was asthma mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so he went over there. And, then he, and, I, and, I, and I, I was coming down, right? And he looked at me. Now it's time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The asthma field guy fucking saved your job. Yeah, yeah. He just told me keep just keep, just keep going, just keep going. Oh, did you guys amazing. ever? How did you? How did basketball players get in shape? 
We stay in shape. But oh, no. shit. <laughs> Don't believe that shit. <laughs> Don't worry, they, would, we don't. they would have clauses in contracts yeah. if everybody stayed in, in shape, right? But, you know, we normally we're connected with our trainers mm -hmm. throughout the off season. We, we get with the trainer leaving out. He gives you a program, and you try to stay with that program as much as you can, if you would. And um, truly, truly, I, I, when I was young, I didn't care. I, I, I didn't worry about being in shape and things of that nature. But he didn't worry about much. No, all in all, man, it was just a, it was kind of an individual deal where you had to have enough in you to keep yourself right, in, right. in the proper condition throughout the, uh, throughout the su summer. Not a lot of people do it, of course. I mean, everybody needs time off, and they take time off. But you just got to be able to gauge yourself on when to come back and when to uh, when to get yourself right and get yourself ready. So, so as rookies, did you come in? Am I taking on your job here? Honey, you have at it. <laughs> as rookies, did you come into camp in a better shape and then your second and third and fourth year, you kind of learned Absolutely. a little bit? That's and then, I, came, I came in shape, maybe I started when Charles Haley got there, maybe it was my sixth year, our first Super Bowl. Charles Haley is the guy that switched around my life and help me start you. learning about getting in shape. Yeah, right. so Charles, hey, I'm gonna try to bring him on our show, oh. but I can't have you you and him on what? together. If we're not, we anything Why? worthwhile said. That, yeah. that is offensive. <laughs> Why did you say that? Because because both of y'all ain't gonna never complete a sentence without cursing. <laughs> <laughs> this okay. Is a show. Fair I, got, I got a story. Let me tell Fair the enough. Chuck story. So, so hey, yeah, I'm taking over. You, yeah. you, 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 you <laughs> want to slide out? Go ahead. So he comes on a charity ride with us. Charles, you know, he used to ride. Yeah. And we meet at some little place. Yeah. And he comes riding in, and I met him there. And it, this is he was retired. His right. back wasn't great. Right. And on a chain, one of these tiny <laughs> little gold chains. He's got five Super Bowl rings hanging off his hip, <laughs> riding a chopper. And I, and, I, and I said, I said, what are you doing? He goes, I don't go anywhere without these things. So as he gets off his bike, he goes, hold up. He pulls them and he puts them all on. And he goes, they're all going to want to see him in the bar. So he would wear them into the bar. Then he'd come right back out again. And not that he was drinking or anything right. like that, but he'd come out of the bar. And then he'd put them things on this little tiny gold chain again, and he'd take off. But monster? That's a monster. Yeah, I, I mean, I you're a monster, the story but behind that. you do. Yeah, he drank free everywhere he went. Showing yeah, those rings. Oh, <laughs> yeah, knowing <laughs> Charles, yeah, yeah. Knowing, knowing, hey, he, he probably had free drinks all the time. What's hey, okay? hold on, hold on, hold on, man, hold on, man. Thank on, God we man. just were even all, 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 all I'm bit saying, here. all I'm saying. <laughs> me, me, what? <laughs> me, me, I was getting outnumbered. The brothers look, are killing me here. Look, look, look. This is what I've never figured out about our show here, and you too. Me and you are big men. We have normal sized heads. What's wrong with these two guys here? <laughs> Why the heads are so huge? <laughs> Consider the source. <laughs> Why the heads that huge? <laughs> Because we have you, smaller bodies. He just got out of the van through the back two doors. Why would you talk about naming <laughs> <laughs> They cover for us. Wow. Yeah, they come so we have hey, completely lost control. I've always heard <laughs> jealousy will rot a man from the inside. <laughs> that was pretty so good. Uh, that's pretty okay, good. all right. I, I feel like we're, we're okay. <laughs> the show was an afro. It's off the tracks right now, Em. We're Get so it back. Off the tracks. Uh, Get it back on the we're track. We're so off the tracks. <laughs> I love it so much. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, hey, we're gonna do this again. Oh, that's it. No, yeah. Well, I mean, we've got we have a party to go to. Oh, we have the dub. This is the party. This is yeah. this is the party. We are at the chop shop. We are at the chop shop. You got it. We want to thank the chop shop McKinney. We want to thank Miller Light. We want to thank Matchbook. We yeah, want to thank Eddie Belfour for the whiskey, Matchbook Cabernet, <laughs> Chasing Venus Sauvignon Blanc, Early Bird CBD gummies. If you need to chill like I usually do, you Tom will to try that. some of those. Wine a little, um, wine, wine, a little wine, bar. wine a little wine bar. I wine a little too. And I'm going to finish this. This is so testosterone laden right now. <laughs> is raise wow. your hand if you've carried and birthed two children. So suck it, all of you, I win! I refuse to do the last I win. words. I will I win. not do her last this words. I'm totally tired of hearing about <laughs> how tough you guys are and all your strip clubs and all that sheer, stuff. Sheer experience. <laughs>
<laughs> from being in this business forever. I see what happens when you drink water. Drew, Drew, see what happens when you drink water. Carried two babies <laughs> and birthed them and all years. that. I felt so, like I had two kids early this suck morning. It, all of you. Why does she have to say that word? Why does she have to say that word? We don't need that word. I mean all the accolades. I'd like to take this opportunity. Yeah, let me know. Congratulations. Get back to me. Get back to me. How do you do a disclaimer? I love all of you. I love all of you. See you next week. Love all of you. Love you. Bye, y'all. Love you. Can't wait till we do this again. Yeah.